Hi everybody, I'm here at the car wash. I want to show you my uh, most efficient way of washing an RV at a car wash. I'll share that with you in a minute. I uh, just want to give you a quick update on the maintenance that I was having done on the RV. Got the EGR valve switched. We got the O2 sensor switched at Mr. Front End. They hooked me up. Went all the way back up to Jacksonville, talked with Mark at Amco Transmissions. Hooked up the RV, drove it 20 miles, said everything is awesome, we are good to go. He referred me to his buddy at Muffler City. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong, guys. Uh, because I needed a new catalytic converter. I needed a new one. Uh, replaced that, showed me the old catalytic converter on bank one, which is the driver's side, completely hollow catalytic converter. One thing I do often, though, in the RV is clean it about wash it about once a week, the exterior. I like it looking good because as you can see up close, it starts to acquire dirt and grime uh, very, very often, very, very quickly, it adds up. And if you go to one of these places that has the really high ceilings like this, you're still gonna pay a fortune in quarters because this takes almost an hour to wash this RV from roof to bottom. So I'm gonna share with you how I do it kinda. Uh, $2 is probably the most common price you're going to see at a lot of these places. So $2 to get you started. You can use the foam brush, you can use the, the power rinser. Um, as you can see here, I've got $4 set aside right here. And the reason why I have $4 is because I'm going to put $2 worth in. Then I'm going to go up to the roof and I'm going to basically pressure wash the roof really good. And then I'm going to come back down and I'm going to wash the entire outer part of the RV. Then I'm going to fill this bucket up with soapy water. This is my brush. Uh, after that thing beeps and says, oh, you're out of money, I'm going to say, okay, fine. I'm going to slowly take my time washing the entire exterior of the sides of the RV and everything. And then not until I'm done cleaning everything will I feed it my last $2 worth of quarters to start from the top again and do one final rinse all the way down and around the RV. That's how I do it. So it's supposed to be really nice. The forecast on this coast all the way up through into Georgia, which I'll be soon, is all looking like seven straight days of sun and like 66 to 70 degrees for a high. Really super excited. So let's wash this bad boy. So, I mean, it's getting to the time of year now where tilting the panel is maybe not going to be necessary anymore. I am tilting it today, but as you can see on this sunny day, I'm at 13.1 volts, bringing in 13.9 amps, 13.7. Got a nice little parking spot here. Oh, it's still a little windy. Woo. This is where I'm parked. Jacksonville Beach is right there where that big truck is going, two blocks away. So I'm parked here in a little section right here for parking and there's no parking restrictions, which is awesome. So I've got the panel tilted up there a little bit because the sun's gonna be here for a few hours while I uh, go play at the beach. Now Jax, I have a question for you. What do you, this is Jax Beach. Did you know that? That's what they call this. Yeah, Jax the cat is at Jax Beach. That's, that's pretty cool, right man? You wanna check it out? Yeah, yeah, okay. What are you doing out there? Caught ya. I caught you, buddy. You're busted. Jax, we're at Jax Beach. What do you think? Yeah, this is your beach. This is Jax Beach. Neat, huh? I like that. All right, it's uh, really windy here at the beach, but as my video title suggests, I am going to talk about how to keep the RV cool in this video if you're interested, but I'm going to wait till a little later in the day because 
Right now it's about 54 degrees and the wind chill feels like it's about 40 right now. So I'm gonna wait till the sun gets a little higher and uh, then, I'll, then I'll start talking about cooling the RV. Right now I want the RV to warm up a little bit. Here's Jacksonville Beach, which might look a lot different in the summertime. In the winter, not a thing going on except me out here. It will warm up to about 60, Eight degrees I think is the high today and you know if I bring a, a warmer shirt down here I could definitely plop plop my seat right there and look out the water So yeah, let me relax a little bit and I'll get back to you guys here with uh, some RV cooling tips. Hey guys, so I'm back in the RV. It's kind of midday right now and I thought I would uh, talk about how I climate control the RV. You know, keep it cool, also keep it warm even though it may not be that big of an issue right now. But th it's one of the more common questions that a lot of viewers ask me, you know, Eric, how do you survive the heat out there? How can you leave your cat in that burning hot RV while you go lay on the beach, you know, for an hour? You know, so I, that reminds me that a lot of people don't realize that I'm not in Florida in the summer. You know, I, I chase 70 degrees all around the country. That's what I've been doing for the last two and a half years is chasing 70 degrees. So I'm never anywhere that's extreme hot or extreme cold. That really helps me with climate control. But that's the, the biggest thing that I think people need to understand about my videos is that I chase 70 degrees. I do not go places where it is extremely warm or extremely cool. So managing the RV's temperature in here is really no biggie. And Jacks can survive hours in here and you know the temperature maintains 70 without me naturally. So I boondock a lot, which means I don't plug into power very often. Uh, when I do plug into power, I have the option of running my air conditioner up here. I can also run the onboard furnace and just set this to 70 degrees over here and I don't have to worry about the fan blower in there draining my batteries because I'm hooked into power. Now when I'm not plugged into power I can't use that source of heat. I can't use this obviously um, unless I'm running the generator. Um, so that's why I use my portable buddy heater that's in the front hooked to a propane tank because it doesn't take any power to heat the RV. As for cooling in the RV it's not really usually that big a deal. If it's 70 degrees outside and sunny yeah, I might get 75 in here if I don't open any win windows. <clears throat> but why not just open some windows? So you can see here, I've got screens and all the windows around here. Let's in a breeze. The biggest thing with letting that breeze actually work is to give it crosswind. But allowing air to come through this whole door and go through the main living room and then go out here or vice versa, that, that continually keeps airflow in here as well. Um, I've got two skylights. I've got one over in the cab door area. I've also got a skylight vent in the bathroom. I can open those up and allow some air to go through. I've also got two wing windows up here. I can't really show you because I've got too much stuff up there, but those two wing windows can open as well. They're higher, uh, so they let out a lot of heat that may be storing in the, in the RV. If it ever does get too warm, you know, I will fire up the generator. You know, we'll just start up the generator and we'll, we'll turn the AC on. There we go. You know, do that for an hour. That also, uh, also sends a charge to my batteries uh, from the onboard converter. So, you know, I know it kind of defeats the whole purpose because it's bright and sunny and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, hey, you're getting plenty of solar. You don't need to run the generator and waste gas. But, you know, if it's warm in here, I, you know, I'll, I'll turn on the air conditioner, sure. I will uh, now show you my most common way of just keeping airflow through here if it is a nice day like today where it's almost 70 degrees. I've talked about in other videos how this outlet is actually wired in from the inverter off of my solar batteries. So, although this is a, looking like a normal outlet, it does not need power. I can use it while I'm boondocking because it's off solar. So I'm inverting the power to be able to run this 60 watt fan right here. And that's pulling air from outside and then bringing the air into the room and then maybe out the window or just keeps, you know, air, fresh air circulating in here. It runs off of my inverter. Then at night sometimes I also like to just have some air in my face. 
Um, I, I will open this window and kind of open the blinds a little bit to let some fresh air in. And then I have this little DC fan, which I kind of just wedge between the mattress and the wall. And it just has a DC outlet that I can plug in right up here to give me some air. This uh, DC outlet runs off my batteries as well. Sometimes just that air blowing in my face. It's also an ambient sound, so it takes away from a lot of the other noises you may hear outside the RV. If you are the type of person that uh, hangs out here in Florida in, in, in the summertime, then I don't think this kind of system that I'm talking about right now would, would work for you. You would definitely have to run the air conditioner a lot. If I ever got stuck in a place that was really hot or really cool, I would just have to adapt on that day. But from day to day, um, it doesn't get hot in here. It doesn't get cold in here. Um, I have this RV climate controlled in a way that is very safe and comfortable for me and my cat. And um, I know there's a lot of people out there who just uh, can't grasp that. They watch one video, they see the sun, and they automatically think it's 112 degrees and that I'm killing my cat in my RV. And it's like, it's 70 degrees in my RV, guys. I don't go anywhere where it's that hot or that cold, ever. So that's pretty much how we manage. Right, everybody? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey guys, this is Jax, my kitty cat. I'm his servant right here, Eric. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel here on RVing. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up below. Make sure you subscribe, check out all our other videos, and keep following us on the road. Thanks guys.